All right, we're going to get started. Um, welcome to ProCon 2021. This is the Implementing the No Silence on Race Framework, One JCC's Path Toward Institutional Change. My name is Cherise Smith, and I am a program associate here at JCC Association of North America. I use she, her pronouns, and I have dark brown hair, and I am wearing a light brown sweater today. Joining me today from JCC Association is my colleague and senior designer, Lorraine Macklin. The session is being recorded. We understand that some people don't wish to be recorded, in which case you can turn off your camera, but we encourage everybody to keep it on if you're feeling comfortable so that we can feel as though we're all together. We're aspiring for every person to feel they belong at ProCon 21, and we're working to build inclusive spaces in which all people feel welcome, respected, safe, and fully included. To that end, we encourage you to consider the following suggestions as we begin our time together. You're invited to rename yourself in Zoom with your name, agency, and if you're comfortable, adding your preferred personal pronouns. We're also enabling closed captioning and you have the option to turn it off using the CC button on the bottom toolbar of your Zoom window. You can reach out to either me or Lorraine in the chat if there's anything that we can do to enhance your learning experience during our time together. And we are so thrilled to offer this multifaceted conference at no cost to our JCCs, which was made possible because of our very generous ProCon 2021 sponsors. Each sponsor believes in the JCC movement and the incredible work JCC has accomplished day in and day out. We hope that you will join us in showing appreciation for their support by visiting their booths in the virtual vendor hall or connect with them anytime during ProCon and beyond. So today we're going to be hearing from some really remarkable individuals and their journey toward institutional mm -hmm. change. Today, we're going to be joined by Ben Cates labor, employment, and human rights lawyer at Goldblatt Partners, Dr. Nadira Khan, lead physician at Bedford Family Health Organization, Harriet Witchen, executive director of the Miles Nadal JCC, Melissa Smith, assistant curator and community programs at the Art Gallery Ontario, and Liv Mendelson, director of accessibility and inclusion at the Miles Nadal JCC, and Artistic Director of the Real Abilities Film Festival in Toronto. You can read their fuller bios for each panelist on the Spot Me platform. And now I'm going to turn it over to Melissa so that she can lead us in a land acknowledgement. Melissa. Thank you so much and welcome everybody. Um, I'd like to acknowledge today that Miles Nadal's Jewish Community Center and our speakers are on traditional territories of the indigenous nations who have lived on these lands since time immemorial. The MNJCC is located on lands that are the traditional homes of the Mishisagig Nishnabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Huron Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. Toronto continues to be home to many indigenous people who live alongside settlers newcomers, and people whose ancestors were enslaved across the Americas and the Caribbean. As a settler, I'm grateful to live and work on this land. And recognizing this in a meaningful way means making commitments to sharing and upholding responsibilities to all who now live on these lands and the land itself. In our work, let us be mindful of these commitments. Thank you so much, Melissa, for starting us off in that way. And thank you to uh, Charisse, um, who has been so supportive. Um, I know some of you were at yesterday's session with Imani Chapman, which was so powerful. Um, so a few caveats before we dive in. First one, um, we are hailing from Toronto where we are back in lockdown. Um, so uh, small children are at home with us. Um, there, there's always the possibility of interruptions or surprise guests, so bear with us. Um, and also uh, just to ground before we dive in um, to detail, just to set up what we're hoping to do today um, and, and also um, the limitations of the session and the time. So um, we know that every JCC has its own culture. 
and its own geography and uh, works in its own way and will need to engage in equity and anti-racism work in its own way. Uh, but as a movement and as individual JCCs, we're all part of a wider culture that includes systemic racism and white supremacy. So this is also work that we can be doing together um, and supporting each other and learning from each other. Um, what we're going to talk about today is just a snapshot of where our JCC is. So we're going to take you through the principles that have ground our work and guide our work um, and the talk list or the details of where we are. Um, and we're going to ask you, um, once we do that, to share with each other. Um, but we're in it. <laughs> we're in the middle. Um, it's, it's important work. It's messy work. We are making mistakes. Uh, we are learning from them. So this is not a training. Um, we're not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. We're just here to share our experience and, um, and to hope that, um, you know, we know lots of you are also doing this work and to hope that you will all join us. So um, thanks so much to the JCCA folks who are um, staffing the slide turning for me. Um, so we, we, we can go to the first slide. Um, and I just want to share um, who all these wonderful people that you just met are. Um, there we have a collection of uh, board members and staff. So um, this is a, a speaks to the commitment of the organization for its leadership to be directly involved in this work. And we're so grateful to our board members for taking time away um, from their days. Um, and a special thank you to Nadira, um, who we weren't sure would be able to make it uh, originally because she has been vaccinating and testing uh, the city here <laughs> for COVID-19. So doing that heroic work. Um, so thank you to all of you. Um, we can go to the first slide. So, or the next slide. So um, just to share, um, for us, we've been, we like to think that we've been engaged in equity work for a long time, um, but really in a direct and strategic way, um, this work came out, uh, this latest work came out of response um, to a letter that was written um, by three Jews of color in Canada, Sarah Jacoby Harris, Akila Allen Silverstein, and Yoni Belete, um, and really calling on the community, uh, the organized Jewish community to do more and to do better and to really address um, racism in our community. And um, this, this letter uh, was written in June of 2020 in the wake of um, a lot of the conversations that came out of the aftermath of the, the murder of George Floyd. Um, I, I will be speaking to it, but I'm also gonna put in the chat just a link to them and to their work. Um, and I'll be speaking a little bit more about this, but I also um, want to acknowledge Tema Smith, who has been working with us as um, our equity and, and uh, anti-racism consultant, who's not here with us today, but I'm also going to put her information um, down there for you. Okay, next slide. <laughs> so these are the nine pillars they outlined, um, work that they, areas where they see work need to be happening. Um, and these pillars have been really informative for us in, in ways to dig into this work. So the first one is allyship. So this, this speaks to both individual and organizational um, need to support Jews of color and black Jews and black indigenous people of color um, uh, who are and are not Jewish. And so it begins with every individual in the organization reading their letter and um, responding to it in a personal way and also to the organization creating a statement which we'll share with you shortly. Um, education, so having um, training and consulting, um, knowing that we can't do this work alone, knowing that our staff, um, everything starts with our staff and we'll speak more about that, but that we also need um, uh, support to see where our blind spots are and to know how to do this work in the most impactful and the deepest ways. Um, indigenous education. Um, so being mindful um, that we are, we have a responsibility to be part of a process of reconciliation um, and to connect with indigenous uh, groups and to connect with indigenous Jews. Uh, next one, next slide, sorry. Um, working with a paid consultant, and I, I emphasize paid uh, because we do not want to be putting more work on people of color to do teaching and training. We really wanna make sure that we're um, compensating people for their, their time. 
uh, working with a consultant who can create a multi-year plan with you and a roadmap. Employment, um, and this, ben, this has been a big part of Ben's passion, which I think he'll speak to, but looking at our work environment, um, looking at the experience of staff, uh, of racialized staff, of all staff, looking at our recruitment, retention, and promotion policies, um, all with an eye to, to equity and anti-racism, creating an advisory um, and metrics. Um, and so we'll talk about what we've done there. Next slide. Um, investing in leadership for Jews of color, um, creating that pipeline, making sure that that is there. Uh, programming and partnership. This is often where this work starts. We have, you know, panels and programs and, um, and that's so important, um, but has to be continued throughout um, the work of the organization. And supporting Jew Jews of color organizations. Um, no Silence on Race, um, this group of, of Jews of color has now actually become a not-for-profit and um, working with them and supporting them. So those are the nine pillars they identified. Um, Next slide. I'm not gonna read through our whole statement. It's a couple slides long, but I will put it in the chat um, and you can look at it later. Um, next slide. It sort of grounds this work in Jewish tradition, um, speaks to a, can being a community center where everyone can be their full selves and where we're, we're specifically, we named, we chose to name um, anti-black racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, homophobia, transphobia, yeah, ableism, sexism, and xenophobia, amongst others. And our board um, signed on to this and specifically wanted to name those. Um, and then the next slide um, speaks to the work that we want to be doing, to our aspirations um, and to our hopes for this work. Um, so uh, you can read through the, the full statement, um, but I think you'll get a better flavor of this work. Uh, we can stop slide share now. We'll go back to it a little bit later. Um, but um, you're going to hear from everybody on this panel about what drew them to this work, what resonates for them in the no silence on race pillars, um, and, and what their hopes are. Um, so um, I've forgotten the order that we, uh, that we designated, my apologies. Um, can we start, um, I guess we'll just, we're starting with Ben. Great, Ben, go ahead. Thank you, um, Liv, and thank you to the to the organizers of the conference for having us. It's uh, uh, very much appreciated to have us come here to tell um, our story. <clears throat> I, I think what makes the mo mo most sense as I was reflecting on what to say today is just tell you about how, how we got here. Um, as, as Liv mentioned, in, in the wake of, of the George Floyd uh, murder and the protests that arose um, around, around his murder, but also just the general um, discussion around race, racial injustice in our society, which is um, what was was also a very strong movement um, in Toronto, in Canada, even though um, the murder happened in in, this, in the U.S. That there were a number of issues um, and individuals, uh, people of color, members of the BIPOC community who were um, uh, killed and, and and some deaths at the hands of police as well in Canada that we were dealing with, and so there was a really strong movement developing here as well, and and. Um, you know, th there was a march one one day that, um, um, uh, in support of, of, of this issue, that went right down uh, sort of the center of our uh, city, Bloor Street, right past um, my house, and then right past the center, the JCC, um, that we're, we're all a part of. And it, it really brought home to me that um, you know, as, a, as a JCC that's centered in Toronto in a very diverse city that um, serves a, a much broader community than just the Jewish community that serves the the our, our neighbors from who are our community groups that work in the in the indigenous communities and the BIPOC community, but also just our staff, our members are made up of such a diverse group of people. It was um, it, it, it was necessary for us to address this issue, uh, in my opinion. And um, like like many white people and many white Jewish people, uh, I took a look around at the organizations that I was a part of, the institutions that I worked with. Um, and, and had a role in guiding and, and really thought hard about our commitment, not to just being non-racist, but to, to being anti-racist and to actually doing the work um, that was necessary. And, and what, what we noticed, and it, it, didn't, it didn't take a lot to do this, 
is that well, well, the JCC, our JCC has been committed um, to equity and diversity and inclusion in a broad sense, has done a lot of work around um, ableism, around the LGBTQ community, a lot of very strong leaders within the JCC who advance an equity agenda. But we've missed, we missed um, anti-racism, both uh, generally to our, our broader community that we serve um, as, as uh, our, our empo the employees, the, the members, as I said, um, but also within the Jewish community, that we, we lacked diversity in the, the, the part of the Jewish community that we were accessing in our city. Um, and so uh, uh, it was, and, and looking around the table at the board, it, it looked um, a lot like I do. And, and that was something that was easy to, <laughs> easy to recognize and, and um, something that, that we needed to address. Um, uh, and, and on a personal level, you know, I think that <clears throat> as a Jewish person and, and, and a Jewish community with our own history of, of oppression, our own experiences um, um, with persecution uh, and, and, and our, 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 our fervent uh, approach to dealing with anti-Semitism, it, it was incumbent, I felt, on us to take some further action around this issue that so many people were speaking about. We couldn't sit. We couldn't sit on the, on the sidelines, um, and 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 it, it, the first step, which was a hard step, was recognizing that we hadn't done enough, um, and and then figuring out how we could move forward. And and it was important for us to ground, for me at least, for us to ground our work in the community that we're, we are part, that we serve as a, as a JCC, as a, as a community center. Um, and it was also important for me that we we found the right way to 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 the right way forward. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to do was we talk a lot about pillars, the pillars of the, of the JCC community that we have. Um, and what we really wanted to do is, was not just talk about anti-racism or talk about representation. We wanted to embed um, anti-racism as part of the structure of the JCC. And that meant taking a really wide view of looking at the board, looking at our employees, looking at the, the community groups that we partner with, the um, external Jewish groups that we partner with and that access the JCC. Um, and also taking a hard look at one of the things that our, our center has done a lot of work in is um, what we call Jewish and families, which is like the mixed um, families who are one family member Jewish and another family member, you know, maybe being of a different religion or a different or being a person of color, being a, an indigenous person, a black person, and, and really trying to reach out to those families so that the whole of the family um, feels connected in a part of the JCC. And so, but we weren't doing that work um, in the core part of, of, of the JC. We weren't accessing those groups. We weren't bringing in um, um, people from that broader community. And, and also the Jewish uh, people of color who make up, a, I think the numbers I've seen, you know, 10 to 12% of the JCC. And it was not someone that, a group that we were focused enough on. Um, but, and so, so the question of how to move forward, it was, was a difficult one to some extent. And the No Silence on Race group that really challenged organizations like ours to step up was a, a really natural, um, um, uh, uh, I don't wanna say partner yet, cause I don't know if, if, if we're quite at that stage, but someone who could, we could draw some leadership from um, and, and work with to guide the work that we were doing and to do it um, with consultation, to do it deeply, to actually engage with our members and our community around us. And it's been a really uh, great you know, beginning to the work that we're doing um, and I look forward to being able to come back uh, to this conference and to others with, with a, a more diverse and a broader group of people that can that will speak be able to speak to how whether we've been able to advance this and, and do it in a way that is um, connecting with people and um, bringing these issues to light and making change. Um, so I'll leave it there and, and I really look forward to, to speaking with you in the smaller groups and, and getting a sense of where everyone else is at on this journey. Thank you so much, Ben. Um... I'm going to turn it over to Nadira. Thank you um, for the opportunity to participate in this conference. It's Ben is actually very hard to follow up on because I think ironically, a lot of those statements apply to me as well. Um, I'm very fortunate to have grown up in Toronto and I think I've had a very good experience, but I would agree that the murder of George Floyd last year forced us all um, to have a, a bit of a reckoning about where we're at within ourselves and within the larger community 
and community means many things to different people. As a member of this particular JCC, my children have all gone to school here and next year will be my last year of children in school at this JCC. So it's been a lot of years, I have four children. And it's very interesting when you challenge yourself as an individual to, to actually reckon with what is happening with the world, what's happening with you as an individual and what's happening with the community around you. And as a person of color, I had to ask myself if I'm actually using my voice. And so I think the no silence on racism, that slogan actually really spoke to me in that way. Um, in that sometimes we become almost more comfortable because things seem okay on the surface. And so looking through the pillars of, that have been presented, there was so much unpacking to do with each pillar. I really had to stop and think about what each, each one represented to me and what each one meant to me because they're all critically important and all necessary. But I realized to some degree the process I was looking at and what drew me to being um, a member of this, of this board and I have a huge interest in this specific area was that it's so multifactorial and so layered. So on the one hand, I think I, when I was reading through allyship, I think about us as individuals and myself as an individual. And I challenge myself to always be thinking about now, where is my bias? Is it unconscious? Is it conscious? Is it there? And I think as, I'm, as we're all growing from the events of what happened in 2020, we're having to put ourselves in these uncomfortable positions and for lack of a better word, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and saying when you feel uncomfortable and feeling the effects of what that means. In, in addition to that, it's, it's individually is one thing, but looking at the mandates of these pillars that were presented and needing process for people to help inform and advise of how we're going to deliver the goods in terms of developing programming, partnerships, um, strength was critical. And of course, then we always have to ask ourselves, well, what's, how, do we, how do we evaluate it? And I found that very fascinating that we do need to figure out some metrics. And I guess, as Liv said, everyone's going to have to do that for themselves and figure out what makes sense for their community, for their, um, uh, the population that's there. How do we how do we deliver programming? How can we inform ourselves? And how do we evaluate ourselves? So how do we do that self reflection at the end to say to see if what we achieved is what we wanted? And they're big tasks. And I don't I, I I'm actually as, as I as I sit here and I listen and I think about it, it it's it's quite a bit of work. But I'm excited about the journey because I think we all are owed the opportunity to have a voice and to encourage our members to have a voice. And for me, what the JCC has always represented was a place for my children and, and a place to be part of a larger community and making sure that somehow everyone who has the benefit of coming into facilities like this feel their voice and have an opportunity to use it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to our executive director, Harriet Witchin. Hi, everybody. Um, you know, I'm really lucky uh, because I have these passionate board members. Not everybody's going to have that. So um, shout out. Um, they're really phenomenal and they push me in ways that uh, I wouldn't have known how to push myself. And I also have live and that goes without saying. Liv and the other staff in our building who are so passionate about inclusion. But, you know, I think there's a possibility, especially as a downtown JCC, you can become complacent. You know, we're open to all, we're, we're, we're aware of our biases, we're woke, we're all these things. And boy, was it a hard day for me when I saw the results of the staff survey that said not so fast. And then I had to ask myself, okay, we have a lot of staff of color. What jobs are they in? 
Are they, are they reception? Are they security? Are they ECE? Do they have choice over their working conditions? Do they have to take public transportation? In our, in our city right now, that means are they at risk of COVID? And I just thought this can't be true. This can't be true. And it was, I had always heard where people, if they weren't Jewish, they felt somehow othered, uh, whether it was in our members or in our staff. But this, I thought this wasn't possible in RJ, and it really was. And, you know, Nadira, you spoke about a reckoning. It was a hard thing to hear. And it made me realize that, that this kind of work can't be limited to what I'm comfortable with. It can't be limited to what any one person is comfortable with as a personal or a professional. Uh, I think when you said that, Nadira, that we have to actually just kind of call ourselves into this process and get comfortable with not being as fantastic as we thought we were. I think that's really, really important. Um, the no silence on race framework gave me the grounding that I needed as an executive director, because first of all, it was founded and completely conceived by Jews of color in the Canadian context. And it was specifically calling out the Jewish communal organizations to do better. And it was so well thought out and they're such lovely people and they're so, they're such bridge builders. I thought, okay, this will work. Um, I wanted to echo also that it's, it's challenging when you want the voices of people of color at your table, but you don't wanna put pressure on them. They would say to me, seriously, now you want me to do this work too? So the question is, how do we talk less and listen more, which is not my forte, talking less and listen more. Um, we started with a, a very different board recruitment process this year and we're getting there. There's, there's more diversity on our board than ever before. And this gave us the opportunity to say, I'm just not listening to that nonsense anymore about do you have to be Jewish on a board? It's so much unwritten nonsense. So I just, we weren't listening to that. We were, we were upholding equity in our governance and in our nominating process. And I'm really proud of that. Um, but there's a lot of work for us to do. And the, I think what's crucial for us is it has to be a staff board partnership. It can't just be, and a community, that's the third piece. You have to actually know what the people using your building, how they feel about you, and you have to be willing to listen. So um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to share. And I'm going to hand it over to Melissa. Hi, everyone. And yes, thank you so much for um, having us uh, visit with you today to, to share about our experiences and our story. And yeah, I just want to echo that it really is just at the start. Um, and for me, the reason that this work was so important is because I live in the neighborhood. The JCC is my community center. And having moved to Toronto, um, you know, a little bit older outside of school, it was a way to get to know folks and to get to know my neighborhood. So I'm really passionate about the center in that regard. And then in addition, the work that I do at the Art Gallery of Ontario is also about lowering perceived and physical barriers to the collection. So I do a lot of work around inclusion when it has to deal with the operations of the building, but also programmatically. Um, so a lot of uh, that ethos and, and the thinking around how to undo these constructs that just don't have to exist anymore. And the pandemic has really given us a moment to uh, reflect and to undo these things that we just are doing because of the status quo and because of fear of change. And so this work and being able to be on the board and represent also as someone who is not Jewish and someone who does this work regularly in another environment has been really rich and really rewarding. And I mean, really my goal anytime is just to try and create space um, to advocate and use whatever privilege or power that I have to um, create that change. So I'm just really grateful to be able to be here today to share with you and to work with all these incredible people that have already spoken on the panel. Um, and I look forward to chatting with you all as well. So thank you so much. Thanks team. And we're all gonna be joining with you in, um, in the breakout rooms very shortly. If you guys could put the PowerPoint back on while you're doing that, I'll just, I'll just share a couple of thoughts myself. So I come to this work from a disability justice framework. Um, and so for me, the, the idea of nothing without, about us without us is, is like a core principle. 
Um, and so the tension Harriet spoke to and that Imani spoke to yesterday about how do you center the voices of people of color and the experiences uh, of people of color while at the same time not placing a burden on them to do the work um, and to lead the work uh, is a central kind of tension for me and um, something we're really uh, working on both in our, our staff committee. Um, and yes, someone, someone has asked how to get your leadership on board. We're gonna be talking about that and you're all gonna be talking about that in, in, in working groups. So um, if we can flip through, sorry, speed through, there we go. Ah. Oh. Tachlis. Okay, so where are we? I won't bore you. I won't go too, too deep. But just so you know um, where these pillars have led us. So we have this task force that reports to our board and reports also to the public AGM, which I think is very important, has a, an opportunity to present our work um, and, our, and our plan each year to the public. We are working with Tema Smith. Um, and we, as Harriet said, we really changed our board recruitment process, widened our networks, and uh, widened where we posted both for um, board positions and, and uh, employment positions, really trying to broaden the number of people who are aware of us and uh, who we can, can work with. And uh, Ben actually, um, with his labor lawyer hat and his board member hat, um, is leading uh, a task force, uh, a compensation task force on with an equity and anti-racism lens. And I think that's really important. We need to look at how we pay people um, JCCs are notoriously, um, you know, they're, they're, we're a not-for-profit, um, so we have staff with great passion, but we also want to make sure um, that we're looking at how we pay people with, with an eye to um, equity and, and a racialized lens. Um, staff and organizational culture, um, so we started with that, nothing about us without us has to start from within and with our staff. The first thing we wanted to know is what is our staff's experience? Um, we have uh, some ideas from kind of our annual staff survey, but that never has really focused specifically on race. So um, we heard from people, we heard about their experiences um, and are still uh, uh, gleaning from those, those learnings and that's gonna be ongoing. Um, we've had organization wide, um, all staff trainings uh, related to anti-racism and equity and our board actually had their own training, which I think is very important because you're hearing from our board members who live and breathe this. We have lots of other board members for, for whom this was new or for whom they needed grounding. Um, so getting everyone, getting board training is a great way to get your board more engaged. Um, doing a staff survey is also a great way to get your board more engaged because they, they need to hear what it is, uh, what's happening. Um, we have a staff um, advisory committee um, that reports um, to this board task force. Um, some of our staff are on this call um, and, and looking at all kinds of things, what tra our training needs, our policies, uh, our procedures, you know, the stuff, the, the talkless stuff um, that staff work on every day, our marketing, our communications, um, everything. Um, and our marketing and communications teams have both been um, meeting um, having sessions of our regular meetings that are really focused on how do we widen our networks um, so that we're not looking at the same instructors that we've used before, but that we're widening, we're looking at who else is out there, what else is out there, who can we be connecting with and whose voices should we be amplifying? Um, next slide. I think we're almost, uh, we're getting close to the end of the PowerPoint. I know no one loves PowerPoint. Um, so we, one of, the, one of the things we're most excited about is that we have uh, this great, partnership with Circles of Reconciliation, which is an Indigenous led uh, group. And we have our first cohort starting a 10 week experiential program um, of board and staff meter, uh, members this summer who are going to be working with um, Indigenous uh, community members um, and learning together for 10 weeks. And out of that, we're hoping to kickstart efforts around reconciliation. Um, so I won't read through all of this, but partnerships are um, everything. We know we can't do it ourselves and we know we don't have the expertise to do it ourselves and we don't always have the people with the experiences to share um, whose experiences need to be shared. We're also doing a deep dive um, where we have a new, um, uh, we have a moment um, where we have an amazing uh, executive, a director of our child care who is retiring and someone new is starting and between the two of them we're really looking at our curriculum. 
what are we teaching the kids in our school? What do they learn about being Jewish? What do they learn about their community? What do they learn about their responsibility? Um, so I think that's, that's um, the first place we're doing a real deep dive. And I, I know that that's gonna impact all of our uh, kids programming and eventually all of our adults uh, programming as well. Next slide, I hope, yes, good. <laughs> so that's a snapshot of where we're at. We have lots more to do. Um, are we doing everything right? No. Are we making mistakes and learning every day? Yes. Um, so uh, th there, there is no, um, there is no end, um, and there is no um, one right way. Um, so what we're going to do now, um, hopefully, we can put the questions into the chat. We're going to put you in breakout rooms to talk about um, some questions. Uh, we'll be joining you in the breakout rooms. We're also going to give you a link to. Um, a form that you can fill out. So you don't have to worry about um, scribing as you talk, uh, you can all for each for your group, you can fill in the form of, of what you talk about. So it's it's a tool to help capture. The goal is that we all can share where we're at. Um, and the goal is also um, that we can see how the JCC can facilitate us working together in the future. So the questions we're going to ask you are um, to explore together are which pillars resonated for you, um, to share what you're doing in your organization, what you'd like to be doing in your organization. Um, in the work of anti-racism, who are the allies in your community, whose voices are um, centered and whose need to be centered, and how can we work together across JCCs? So those questions are all on that form. Um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping to start a dialogue and uh, as Harriet will explain, even a, a community of practice going forward. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's hop into it. Hi everybody. So um, I don't know about you, but we did definitely did not have enough time. We got into the first two questions. It was awesome. Um, so, um, the reason we, we know, why do we do this anyway, is people are having these situations in their own JCCs where things aren't happening fast enough. Maybe they're not happening at all. Maybe they really want to drive something, but they're not in a leadership position to drive it. Are they driving it from the bottom up, the top down, the sides in? And so we thought, and it started with my board members saying, I wonder what other board members are thinking. So might we be able to create a cohort? Might we be able to create something that we do together as we go through this. So um, I, I really appreciate if you finish uh, filling out whatever forms you got filled in and press submit and we'll aggregate all of that data and share it out. But I'd like to ask now, do people have um, anything that they'd like to share? We can share from each of the groups. I don't know, do people know what group they're in or do you wanna do this popcorn style? You can raise your hand, somebody can tell me who to call on, but I'd really like to hear what, um, what was said, maybe one thing, one takeaway from your group that you'd like to share with the others. I can share something, Harriet. Okay, we'll do uh, Gretchen and then Suzanne. Um, interestingly enough, there were two of us from the Miles Nadal uh, JCC in our, in our group, but just um, the, the idea of um, how can this be spread across all JCCs and one, one of our uh, other people said it really needs to start from the boards as as you've said so I just wanted to reiterate that but that's really true I think I agree I think it really needs to start at the board level thank you thanks um Suzanne Suzanne you're on mute there was discussion amongst our group about um the need to address this issue with urgency in organizations, that this is a, um, an issue that's been unfolding for many years and has reached a climax now. And, and I know particularly in my JCC, there's, there's interest um, and I think a need, well, the, the, our senior leadership team and board are addressing it, but anytime staff members that aren't part of that senior leadership bring these issues up, it's we're sort of given this response of, well, we're working on it. And um, meanwhile, those of us in programmatic um, positions are left to just wait to implement anything or to just start taking sort of baby steps on our own, which is, 
isn't good enough. It isn't big enough. <laughs> so I would summarize by saying we need, we can't move this with the swiftness we need to move on it without um, more timely, actionable responses from our board and our senior leadership and communicating what's going to happen with the entire staff and membership. Thank you, Suzanne. Does somebody else have something they'd like to bring back from their group? And I, I forgive you, forgive me if I don't see um, all the slides, all the screen people at once, just feel, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and to come forward. Hi, so I'm Clara from the Ann Arbor JCC. Um, and, um, you know, we talked a, a bit in our group about um, the fact that a lot of us are kind of stuck on allyship because we, we can't coalesce cohorts around these issues. Part of it is starting from the top and the leadership. Um, but it also occurred to me that one of the things that I'm up against when I try to work on these issues at my J is that there's a, there's, there's a lot of reluctance, I think, because at least where we are, we're in a bit of a, a bubble um, where we have a lot of like very politically active and very socially social justice active people within our spheres of influence. And I think they feel like they are working on these things and they, we, you know, that they are doing these things. And, and I, I sort of feel like we're a bit self-deluded and it's not an easy, you know, it's, it's, you know, the, it's not safe often and it's definitely not easy to be the person that sits in the room or or approaches the topic and says you know you're being complacent you're you're thinking that we're working on this and we're really not and or you or you don't really want to work on it because you don't really think that we have to because you think it's not really an issue here right and 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 I you know I've been in a lot of different groups lately and reaching out to colleagues lately on these issues uh, including uh, around the, the full speaker docket of JCCA being so overwhelmingly white. <laughs> and a lot of the comments that I'm getting are the same kinds of things, right? It's, you know, you know, I'm one voice, you know, JCCA is not going to listen to me or I can't, I don't know who else is feeling this way. And I feel like if JCCA and, and also leadership doesn't start saying, hey, you have permission to approach us with this. If you are concerned about this, it is safe to tell us this. Like it is, this is work that we wanna do. And I think until people are given that space, we're all gonna be like in this, I'm uncomfortable, but I don't know where to go or what to do. Thank you. I, th I think that's exactly, that's exactly what uh, I think we were hoping to hear at this session because we need to move forward, right? And so I think that's, thank you for that. I have uh, Beth and then Nadira. Beth? Thank you. Um, I just did a lot of listening in our group and it was really fascinating to hear, and I think we all felt this way, that JCCs are extremely welcoming communities. Um, but there is a marked difference between being welcoming and actively and, um, you know, forward facingly anti-racist. So whether we're looking at hiring practices or programming, um, I think, you know, our group talked about top down, um, engaging with people in executive positions and board members and um, really trying to bridge between welcoming and being activists. And, um, you know, that's a tough place to be. It requires a lot of work and um, oftentimes looking through a window, but also in the mirror, as so many people have referenced. Um, so it was great just to be able to listen to the perspectives of JCC um, staff. And we had Nadira in our group leading us, um, you know, just to get everyone's perspective. Thank you for creating the space for this. Thank you, that's perfect. We'll, we're gonna hand off to Nadira.
Nadira, are you there? You're muted, Nadira. Oh, there we go. Um, actually, Beth covered what I was going to say. We were in the same group, and she just highlighted in just that that we commented again that we all seem to be from very liberal, welcoming communities, and um, there's still lots of work to do. And also that the, the pillars were really packed full of stuff. There's a lot, a lot to get done. Thank you, Nadira. Um, we were just going to ask, um, uh, somebody in the chat had a question. I didn't know if they wanted to uh, email it directly to Liv. That'll give us more time to answer it. Or is there something that you needed to ask right away? That was Michelle. Uh, was it Michelle or me? Oh, Miriam Chilton. Right. Uh, you know, I think the, I don't know if in your particular experience, sort of the distinction between anti-hate uh, and, and within that clearly the perspective of anti-Semitism versus anti-racism um, and sort of a prevailing belief among many that anti-hate is sort of inclusive of all peoples um, and building that sort of education and awareness and acceptance and comfort given the activist nature of, the, of, of Black Lives Matter and the like and, and being able to navigate that, that bridge. I think you know the culture of your community and JCC and you also know what needs to be pushed and where and it's a both and. So we have to be anti-hate I think in this environment, I was really proud that our JCC was able to specify also um, anti-Black racism because it is real and it matters. Uh, I was proud that our JCC, despite you know the politics, was able to affirm Black Lives Matter. I know that's not going to be the case, uh, either the desire of or the case of every JCC. Every JCC is going to do it its own way and with its own culture. But I think if we can agree um, that racism is real and exists in Jewish community and exists in our JCCs, um, that's, that's the, first, uh, the first step. So uh, both and is, is my answer there. Um, I wanna say, I noticed like we're getting a flurry of emails. So many people wanna be involved and, and do something together. And that's what we were hoping for. That's really the goal of this session uh, more than anything else. So I know we'll be talking with JCCA um, about how to support that. Your emails aren't going to be lost in the, in the chat or in the ether. So don't feel that if you didn't get it in or didn't, um, didn't, didn't get a chance to speak, I think this, this session alone um, and, and the remarks of the speaker a couple speakers ago who was saying like, what is the JCCA gonna do? What does this conference look like? Who gets to speak? All of those issues I think are things we need to work together across um, the movement. And just seeing like, it's so heartening to see how many people wanna be involved. So I know we're heading into overtime. I'm gonna hand it back to, um, to Harriet and Sharice to close us out. Okay, Ben, you've got 20 seconds and then Sharice is closing. Uh, very quickly, I just want to say to the last comment, um, what I found was that we were we were anti-hate at the JCC, but we didn't name uh, anti-racism enough, and it was leading to a, a gap um, in our programming, in our representation at the board level, in our in our staff engagement. Um, and so, so naming it was important to to keep it on uh, at the top of our mind. Although I don't at all disagree with you that it's encompassing more broadly um, with that notion of being anti-hate or anti-oppression. Um, and the second thing I just want to say is, uh, you know, people are talking about the board role, um, and there's a lot of discussion among JCC uh, directors and, 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 and employees. But if you think that there's board members involved in your JCCs that that would benefit from reaching out to the like us, uh, the board members at our JCC, like in creating some cross discussion there, like I'm totally happy to be involved in that. And it's um, so yes, do that. I'm, I'm I'm prepared to be involved in that, and, and hopefully it can help. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you guys are incredible. This is fantastic. I mean, the conversation that we've all had today and I'm seeing that people are wanting to do community of practice and they're wanting to dive deeper into these important conversations. And I know that um, we have so many people here that are wanting to support this work. I'm gonna put in um, our Miles Nadal team their emails in the chat. So if you want to contact them for any more questions, you can do that. 
Um, it feels an absolute shame to jump into logistics before we close out, but I'm just gonna say thank you again to Melissa, Ben, Liv, Harriet, and Nadira for sharing your journey with us. Um, if you'd like to reach out again, their emails are in the chat. A quick reminder that the virtual vendor hall is going to be opening again today following this session from 1.45 to 2.45 p.m. Eastern, and you're going to have a chance to interact live with the sponsors and learn more about their products and services and how they can help your JCC. If you have a trusted advising session, please use the link that was sent to you to meet with your advisor. And finally, close out your 2021 ProCon experience and the thousands of your peers at the final JCC movement moment, power in community. We're gonna be joined by experienced JCC professionals from beyond the movement to engage in a roundtable discussion on the imperative of cross-community collaboration that, com that comprises the linking arms, hearts, and minds. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you have an incredible afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Thank you again to the Miles Nadal team, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your ProCon 2021. Bye, everybody.